uh, get some of you writing and thinking about how you can engage people with topics that may be quite difficult to, to connect with audiences as well and, and maybe shed a new light or a new way of thinking about things on. Uh, so he has come back in today. Welcome. We are very lucky and grateful to have you here. Yeah. Shall I turn the lights on? It's quite dark in here. Yes, yeah, exactly. It is. Yeah. It feels it's like a small group. They are, yeah. I know, I know. Uh, but it's the first day back after Easter. Okay. So I'm wondering you. if some of them have not come back yet or yeah. if some of them are at the party that Sean was at. Because <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't want to be at that party? <laughs> Your eyes are um, So, yes, maybe. Yeah, let's have some lights on. Okay, let's have some lights on. Yeah. So, uh, over to Tony. Yeah, great. So, w what has come up is that uh, I'm doing a postgraduate certificate uh, course in social science. I'm supposed to present some things to the community or to a group of people and then they're supposed to ask me questions. So I thought, well, it's good if we do this session and then later, if you have any questions, because uh, I think Patrick was thinking about uh, diversity Lewis. Yeah, so I'd like you to ask me questions so that at least I can feel it, I can feel my you know, welcome with the <laughs> so, But also because it will show that they're alive, Tony. Yeah, and it's interactive. So any, anything that uh, I talked about and you feel like, well, I, I, want, I want Tony to tell me more about this, you know, I'll tell you more about it. Because it, it's just uh, a way of uh, interacting and getting, actually teaching me how to teach you. So that's the thing. So I, I, I'm, I'm a rookie. I'm just learning how to get through it. So I'm not as good as that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, we talked about uh, Diversity Lewis and I talked a bit about uh, the stuff we're doing around the community cohesion and we talked about uh, stuff we're doing with the police on that line, you know, but then at the end of the day, Diversity Lewis works, uh, you know, very wide experts because we, we've got a constitution that is there to guide us on what to do. So if, if, if we want to go according to the constitution, we cover schools, we cover prisons, we cover the community. You know, but then the thing is, we also have fun. I, I talked about us having fun. So I don't know how you related to it. If there's anybody who's, who had a few queries when they are doing the project. Oh, has anybody written something? Yeah? Good. How many? Put your hands up. Patrick, Callum, Lauren, Laurie, yeah. Kitty, Amy? Oh, sorry, I can see your arms. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so what I was suggesting is if, if there's anything you want me to clarify before you come to present or you want me to do it after your presentation, I, I, I don't mind. And if you just want to do it where you are or you want to come and perform in front here, I don't mind. So it, it's it's up to you. I, I, I'm not I'm not going to push you to deciding what you want to do. It's just uh, I, I wanted to inform you that uh, we, we we are also part of the Old People's Day, which is going to be held in October. And this is a nationwide uh, what do you call it? it? It is a nationwide day. You know, like Father's Day, Mother's Day. So there's a Old People's Day. So we are looking for volunteers. We want people to come and help out. And uh, I'd, I'd like you to get involved, if you want to, with, with the community in, in that way. So this, these are the things I always try to get as many volunteers as possible. So if you're interested in what Diversity Lewis is doing, then you get hands-on, you know, hands-on experience dealing with stuff around the community. Yes, so if anybody is ready to call, go, then I'll be happy to just listen to what So who is going to read the work out? Everyone. If you want somebody else to read it for you, Hi. or if you want me to read it for you also, I don't mind. Callum, was that you volunteering? No, that was me smiling at Well, <laughs> but you will. Yeah, if you've written something and you don't feel like Just from where you are? You can do it. Um. Laurie? Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, if you tell me what type of presentation you're going to give. Oh no, it was just a piece of creative writing I did, just like blank prose, angry blank prose. 
angry black folks. Not really angry. angry. No, angry. Well, angry is good. No, it's not that angry. I'm honestly. Oh. Um, what it was was I. You know the um, the article you first mentioned that got you guys started about um, diversity, Lewis. Oh, um, the one, the green. Yeah, the guy yeah. talking about the I tried to read it, you can't read all of it because the Sunday Times you have to subscribe. Yeah, but yeah. But I read a bit of it and it was about, he talks about his neighbour, Mr. Robertson. Yeah. So this is called Dear Mr. Robertson. Okay, um, fine. I'm sorry, Mr. Robertson, for my subversive hue, for the deviant curve of my nose. I've told it so many times. <laughs> and every anarchistic hair on my half bred head. I'm sorry for what had to be done to make me, Mr. Robertson. And even more so that in your eyes, I'm not talking about sex. How dare I offend you with my life here, my presence? For I did not know a place of such beauty could conceal such ugliness. Because in all the dirt of London, you see that's where I'm from, we are a rainbow of greys. I'm trying to understand Mr. Robert Robertson, I really am, as it's a community's job to look out for one another. You've been here so much longer than me, so I must ask for your advice. Where should I go back to? so that you may rest easy at night and your children won't have to enjoy, enjoy the equality and diversity of another day. Thank you. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, so this, uh, this is exactly what I wanted you guys to get into the rhythm, you know, to just try to find something relevant within, because it, it, it is a, I think it, it, it is a joy to see somebody like Oprah Winfrey being able to interview somebody and get something that nobody has had thought to ask that question, you know, find a gem within the all that uh, you know news, you know. I saw one about Michael Jackson where she, she was interviewing him, you know, and and the way you know Michael Jackson was singing to her, it is like how come he hasn't recorded this song yet, you know? <laughs> so that kind of feeling, you know. So you bring out the best in somebody interviewing and, and, and I think that's life skills we're trying to show here. Okay, is anybody else want to read or? Or has anyone got any feedback for Laurie on what she wrote? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you, is there anything else you want to add? No, 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 it was just a piece I wrote. I really, I, what I liked about it was the bubbling under anger that it was kind of mm. restrained this piece of writing. It wasn't just that kind of, what we've been talking about, that kind of, just ranting the emotions mm. that actually it felt very controlled and very mm. um, disciplined. Um, I thought, uh, I didn't think you need the line, you see that's where I'm from, I thought that kind of interrupted the rhythm a little bit. And the bit the, about you being long, here longer than me, I thought that actually you could do something about how, a, a kind of a thing about how long this has been going mm. on, almost like a kind of mythical thing or mm. a ridiculous yeah. historical thing, you know, just something yeah. a bit kind of abstract in there. Um, but I really liked it. I thought the opening was, was really kind of interesting and funny and mm. provocative as well. So, yeah, right. no, I just thought, I don't know, it was just random research because I started by looking at that and they were talking about this guy, Mr. Robertson, who they found out was part of the BNP or something. Mm. And then I just looked up like National Front and stuff like that. And it was just a story I had. That must have been thoughts. fun. Yeah, it was a <laughs> did anyone Did anyone go to the, not, not attend the march at the weekend because of the, uh, the joy of it, but. Did anyone see the march on yesterday? I read that. I was there testing it. Very good. Hurrah. Well done. Brilliant. I wish I'd been there with you. I was writing my scripts instead. Um, but yeah, so it was a big. How big was it? Were lots of people there? Um, there were like 100 of them, and like 300, 400 of us. Good. What was it again? There was the. It was the MFE, the March for England. It's like a oh. big. Yeah. With all places, trashes. Oh, good. There was a, one year there was quite a lot of um, violence during Yeah, there were so many police this time. Like, yeah. People got kettled at the end, but oh, cool. I was still getting from the station. Oh, that's probably all their friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, that's too many. Um, good, hurrah. Uh, but yeah, really lovely writing, thank you. Who else is going to read theirs out? Callum. I've missed you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So who has <laughs> who has bought something? Like, Jay, did you bought writing in? Mm -hmm. No, you haven't bought writing in. Um, I have something, but it's on my laptop. But no. Who else had? Lauren. Lauren, why can't you? Well, no, you Heather. Nancy. 
Are you talking to me? Yeah. There's none of my names. Which is your name? I've done so well with this group. What's your name? Becky. Becky? Yeah. What's the name I talked to? You said Laura and I was like, should I have got my name wrong? And then you said my name and I was like, what? Who's Laura? I'm really sorry, Becky. That's awful. You're my, that's your my Achilles heel. What can I say? I'm sorry. You've got some writing. Yeah, but you've heard it before. It's only, Tony hasn't it? It's only like my travel writing piece because it's, oh, but it's not, it's not the diversity. Right, no, but, okay. But um, other people in the group haven't heard it, have they? Because I think yeah. you're one of the only ones from your similar group today. Um, anyone else? So Callum, Becky, Alex, have you? Uh, I don't have anything with me. Okay. Let's see yours, Callum. Oh, okay. This poem is called Hate Rhyme. <clears throat> this poem is one of miserable hate that racists will recite. Your moderate soul will suffer and great as you hear my murderous might. <clears throat> You could call it primal instinct, but I don't much like blacks. Why should our worlds even be linked? All it does is burden my tax. And yeah, I'm 100% Anglo, and I'll wave my Union Jack. And when these aliens all go, I can be a bit more laid back. But this isn't a poem I could actually write with a conscience plain and strong. Multicultural Britain is worth a fight, and those people are just wrong. And I'm absolutely all for freedom of speech, so you can hold your backwards views. But when you come out fighting on the streets of Brighton, you're damn right, I'll bring my abuse. And I'll bring it again, time after time, because I believe it's honestly true. And even if this is a hate rhyme, I made it because of you. Aww. Wow. What did people think? I like you liked it, why did you like it? I thought, it's just, it's, I think it's similar to mine in that it's this sort of like, refined anger. It's sort of like, you know, you, you want, to, you want to be angry at these people, but you don't want to do the same, like, mindless, abuse-throwing rage. Well, you know, but I think because yours was a letter, I think that it, because of the format, mm. there was the restraint was there. But actually, I thought the first bit, I actually think you could have taken that a bit more, to be honest right. with you. I thought because I found it really disturbing, that kind of characterisation. Perhaps particularly because you were reading it as well, but I thought you could have actually really messed with our minds a bit more there, and then kind of pivoted it a bit more. And I thought towards the end, you were still a very sweet anti-person. I thought there could be a bit more hate, a bit more bile towards the end, maybe. Kitty, are you raising your hand or not? No. Okay, just catching your pen in your hand. Um, but, uh, but yeah, good. I like, the, I like the surprise, but I think you could take it a bit more into the mire yeah. and then so it surprises a bit more with a bit more, with a pivot and a bit more bile. Okay. That's so, it's like a strange thing to ask for, but still. A bit more bile. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Good. What did you think, Tony? Yeah, the, it, it reminds me of uh, uh, because w what happened is I sit on the race action group, and there are people who actually are uh, on the extreme side of the right wing, you know, and, and you try to understand what makes them be what they are. And for you, it, it's like there's this guy who who is a caretaker. He he, he starts walking at around four o'clock in the morning and he's not meeting anybody, you know, because four o'clock in the morning, he goes to the leisure center and goes back home when everybody's going back to work. So he's a loner, he's a, we call them lone wolves, you know, and, and this guy was living in Wadi, you know. But then the story starts in November when there were graffiti on, on the walls of Indian restaurants and, you know, Nika, go home, you know, all this, Horrible, horrible stuff being written, and everybody thought, "Oh, it must be students. It must be students." You know, so the police went around looking for students. They couldn't get him. They, they went. They put cameras all over. They couldn't get him. You know, because he was operating in a very, you know, it, it, not in a proper way. It, it wasn't your usual, you know, registered with the ADL or registered with this white supremacist. You know, and it was quite. It was really hard for the police to get him. And, Eventually they got him. It's just that because they had to go on plain clothes and do 24 hours surveillance, you know, until they caught him with the with the marker writing, you know, after putting cameras and you know. So it's it's that thing, you know. There is some people, and when they found that the thing is because he was autistic, he didn't get a good job. So he was saying, "Go home, you guys, you know, you're taking over our jobs, you know." So so this there is a bubbling, you know. Viability on his protest, but at the end of the day, yeah, it's that anger, you know, that the 
the bile and the negativity and it's not something that you're born with, it's something that maybe you get through the system being against you, or learning from your parents or learning from friends, you know, it's, it's, it, you're not born a racist, you know, that's, that's, that's the whole thing. But the other thing is that some people are bitter, you know, so that's why it's, 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 it's such a thin line, you know, so that express of anger and validity of why you're doing it and justifying it, you know, it's, it's, it's quite interesting, yeah. It's, but that would be good to actually somehow work that because now I've got an insight into that character's head, I'm like, whoa, that's scary. Yeah. You know? It'd be almost good if that character could be. I'm not saying in your poem, but maybe in someone else. If someone else is thinking, I haven't done another creative piece yet. Thinking about a piece of prose or a, a character poem where you can actually a monologue poem where you get inside that person's head and not just have the kind of there's one side to this story but this idea of someone who yeah. feels that they've got a real reason for reason. doing something yeah. just see, yeah. but then at the same time it's just, the idea of the marker penning or wrestling yeah. just seems just yeah. you know unthinkable it's unthinkable because he, he and it was just his route going to work he, he never went like all the way you know it was just his route going to work and he goes and scribbles and he goes away and then the thing is, the county council used to come in the morning and wipe it off. So when the police came, there was no evidence, mm. you know. So it was quite, you know, and it went on for like six or seven months. It's you just know? a funny gesture. All of the gestures you could make, yeah. any, of all the protests you could make, mm. just seems... I think it was just... And when they went to his house, of course, they found all this literature. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, that's what you're saying. There are people who just do it with a marker pen, and they get. To, how about the one who can actually go on the internet and know how to make a poem? And, you know, it frightens you. Yeah. It frightens you how these things can be. You can think, oh, it's just mild, you know. But then there are people who really want to do, make an effect, you know. But actually, I mean, that's something we've been talking about as well. That actually, strong emotions. I mean, somebody was, I think it was the other Callum was taking Mickey out of me because my iPad had broken and I was really upset about it. And he was like, oh, poor you, you've got so many problems in your life, you know? And it is that thing, like it's extreme emotions are quite difficult if you live, I live in, you know, my, my partner calls it the bubble, the Brighton bubble, because it's such a safe, comfortable, lovely little place to live. And, um, and, and this idea of having someone hate you so much, is just so alien to me, you know, it's so other. But I find it very difficult to understand what that must be like to walk around thinking without even knowing me, people completely hate me. I suppose as a woman I can kind of buy into that a little bit. But you know, it's it's still it's it still is. other and it's it's be really interesting how we're using our creative writing or we can get into that mindset because it is it's it's frightening and we need other stories, we need other narratives to kind of provoke discussion and get people to change um, what their attitudes towards it. Because like you say, we're not born Racist. Yeah, we're not born with hate. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is quite interesting getting to see the statistics, which because they're not uh, headline news, people just don't realize what's going on until something really bad happens, and the media doesn't help at all. So it, it becomes quite interesting with what I do now to find that wow, there's there's quite a lot of stuff that can be, you know, even done before it's. It becomes a big bomb, you know. Mm. You can defuse the bomb before it explodes. Yeah, and how as writers with, with maybe, you know, speak for myself, not speak for all of you, how as a writer who doesn't experience hate on a day to day, unless it's something like, you know, oh, it's annoying that people don't pick up their dog poo, you know, how do I access an emotion like hate and make it seem real in my, in my writing? How do, you, how do you all do that? Maybe some of you have got hate in your art. Oh, I don't see Callum there, wasn't enough hate, more bile, you need more hate in your life. <laughs> what, does anyone got an answer for that? Does anyone want to? Maybe I shouldn't be encouraging you to be thinking about this. What's the question? So how do you access, if you, if you live a life where you kind of, hate kind of maybe doesn't penetrate your world, how do you kind of conceptualise that, conceptualise that or realise that through your writing? I think it's going to be different for everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never, like, growing up, I never had any racism at all, like, in my life, which I'm, so I find it weird to say, say, but I know out there there is. And I just found a new story about some little mixed race girl who wandered in accidentally to this, um, 
national front thing, they started yelling abuse at her. She's like seven. And her parents were like sussing out this place to have a wedding there. And they said like she didn't understand any of it, like they were making monkey sounds at her. And it wasn't necessarily maybe it's because it's another mixed race child, but like it's just a child. The fact they did that to a child got me really angry. So I'm really like maternal children. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just finding what, you know, getting angry about is different for everyone. So it's finding what you're angry about, even if it's not your race or your people or anything. But there's going to be some form, we all have empathy. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be something that gets to you. Getting into a kind of another person's head, thinking about what yeah. is it about that character, what's brought them, you know, what's the background that's brought them to that yeah. moment when they start writing on that wall or whatever mm -hmm. else is, 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 could be psychologically. I'm now thinking, what have I done for the students? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but, um, but like you say, it's important that this that this writing is important that people think about it and engage with it and start realising how damaging it is. Who else had some writing that they were going to read out? Elliot, did you have your hand up? No. no. Uh, anyone else? Are you just, I thought there were more hands than that up. Were there? There were. Who else was there? You didn't write them down. I did, I thought I'd remember. I'm getting old. No? Back to you, Um, Back to you. Okay. Becky, you sure you don't want to read yours? I don't really want to read it because it's a bit long and I'll like, fall over on my words. You can read it if you'd like. Yeah. Well, why don't you ask Sean? You've got a lovely reading. I mean, I'm going to look battered today, though, Sean. Where's <laughs> uh, this is coming from? We didn't go out last night. <laughs> Does anyone want to back me up? Does Sean look as normal as normal today? Um, yeah. Does someone, Kirsty, do you want to read that or Sean? Sean, will you read it? Um, yeah, do that. Kirsty or Sean, you choose Becky. I read that. You can do it. Okay. So, this is going in Becky's portfolio, so if you can think about things that you might like to, that you might change or that you really like. Um, white trash. No photography, no prostitution, we police this res reservation. The signs read in a bold, faded font. There are about a dozen of them dotted along the side of the winding road, in between the towering conifers and characterless flat pack houses. As we drove, tentatively, a little further, we heard a sharp, piercing screech, a rush of hands, <coughs> fumbling for the camera and the switch, of which there were many to, to open some route much more complicated than having the spiny bit at the top. Mum had commented on inspection of the higher part, while Dad smoked his unnecessary aggressive after flight flag, flag <laughs> our first eagle of the trip. Once the bird had passed, it was back to staring intently out from behind the windows for my brother, who was a little dazed having fallen asleep not long after McDonald's and I. The road had turned and the trees were now much more widely dispersed, revealing acres of fields and meadows framed by snow-peaked mountains. Ahead, a disorganised array of satellite dishes, totem poles, beaten up old trucks and bedraggled horses came into view, all of which scattered about a mismatched corrugated iron shack with a front door and a mail mailbox. And we passed a dozen plots just like it, never seeing a soul. I couldn't help but think that maybe they were hiding. We had, however, encountered one local a few days prior to our family excursion, then meandering along the wrong side of the highway, precariously close to the mountain's edge. He had been cradling a bottle wrapped in crumpled brown paper like you often see in films, three miles from anywhere in either direction. A family friend later explained that this was, regrettably, not an uncommon sight and that a combination of the past moral injustices done against the nation's first people and the money the government threw at them in an attempt to soften the guilt made sure of that. Another example of the segregation we came across was in the village of Pemberton, where we, had been, where we were staying, where my dad had inadvertently taken us into the wrong supermarket. The atmosphere felt tense, perhaps due to the lack of medical white girl pop songs which usually fill the air in that kind of environment, although white wind chants make an undoubtedly pretty sound. The advertisement boards called for the return of horses rather than lawnmowers. That was the only surface dif difference I could see at the time, that they didn't sell crisps. We were ad advised to go to the alternative white store across the street next time. We drove on a little further. It was at this point that my brother decided he had had enough, much to my dismay. 
and there was another mad scramble to find the Game Boy and a Capri Sun to pacify his complaining. Eventually, we came to the centre of the village. There was a white wooden church and school. Adjacent to the church was a pristine white bus shelter, except for one side, on which the words white trash dabbed in thick red paint stared cursingly across out towards me. And lowering my camera, I couldn't help but think, fair enough. Thank you. How was that having it read out, Betty? Oh, that's weird, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reading it out, though, Betty. What did you think hearing it though? Did it make you feel that anything you would change or anything that you thought, oh yeah, that's working or I'm not sure about that? Um, I don't know. I thought, as when we were talking before, I thought I might make some of the changes a bit more aggressive. Like people, I don't know, people being, like with the bit said that we should have gone to the white supermarket next, maybe, I don't know, make it a bit more aggressive. So you're a bit like, oh, why? I don't know. <laughs> What do other people think about that? What did you think about it, Tony? It's, it's the music. I, I thought you, you're trying to create an atmosphere, so mm. it's white trash, but then you've got all this bubblegum music playing, or some crap playing on the background, which is not the type of it. So you've got the feel of how you want the place to look, but I'm, I'm thinking if I'm blind and I can't see, yeah. you know, how else would I get that smell or the beaches or the, you know, mm. around that trashy sort of white supermarket, whatever, you know, maybe the smell of rotten, you know, some or if, you know, I'm going further, some of the senses, you know, some, some of the feel of the senses, it smell, you know, and stuff like that, you know, so you, you really bring it out as trash. What did other people like about it as well, or, or not, like, or less sure about? Did you notice that there are, I really like the rhythm of the writing, so I think that adds to the atmosphere, I think that adds to this tension that you talk about in the piece as well. But could you hear whether it jars just a little bit, where the sentences go too long or where you yeah. just need to clip it back a little bit? It is good to, <laughs> but it's good to hear it out, isn't it, just to notice where that happens. Um, anyone else? I really like the, the, the whiteness. There's so much white in there, it's really oppressive. It actually has a weird kind of um, reverse effect because you kind of feel almost blinded by the, by the whiteness in it as well, but I think, I think that works. Um, I, th I think the description is, works in quite an interesting way because it is quite stark because you don't engage some of the other senses. And I quite like that at the beginning, um, and you use the, the sound quite a lot as well, but it might be something to think about um, later on. Um, and it does feel very visual, you know, this eagle at the beginning and then this shift, and it does feel very oppressive as well. And I think that that really works, but it almost need, it does need now maybe something to slice through or something at the end where it kind of the world kind of alters again. Because I think the description is so good, it almost feels a little bit, a little bit safe now, you know. So, um, so, but good, really, really atmospheric. And, and quite brave to use that repetition of whiteness as well, I thought. Um, good, thank you. Anyone else? Don't make eye contact when you haven't written anything. Um, look away, <laughs> that's <laughs> quite harsh. <laughs> um, so over to Tony, was that okay, Tony? Sorry that we haven't got more writing for you today. Oh, it's, it's all right, it's just that I was, I was looking at it and thinking, yeah, it's maybe the only thing, you know, because my, my idea was to get you guys out into the community and uh, we, get hold of somebody, you know, so like, I, I've come with my story, so my idea was to go there and get a story from somebody, and then it's the technique of getting the beats that will make you able to write a poem, like he did, or write a story, like he did, or write a short thing, but then getting it so that it becomes like headline news because when you pick up a newspaper, you know, it's the headline news that attracts you, then you read the story. So my main idea is to get you into that frame of mind of picking up something. That's why I was giving the example of Oprah Winfrey trying getting Michael Jackson to sing a song that he's never even thought of singing. It's just the kind of thing. It's, it, it's a skill that you, you, you can never ever, you know, learning classes, but it, it's something that once you know how to do it, then it becomes quite a life skill. You, you can run with it, with anything you do in life, you know, if you're doing a presentation, if you're doing an article, 
you know, because I, I used to write articles <coughs> or newspapers, and this is my story where all that has been told about an artist like Elvis Presley, you know, everybody knows about Elvis Presley, but there's some things that you find that, oh, I didn't know about that, you know, how come nobody has thought about this, you know, like Elvis Presley had a twin brother who died when they were, and he was never known, and, you know, things like, hey, you know, th those are the things that are, I was hoping we could think of having a, interview skills where you learn how to make a questionnaire because that's part of my learning objective is to try to find that diamond by polishing the the ore whatever it's there you know, and getting the real essence of somebody so community writing you know that that was my main thing you know, but then we, we cut it down into me you know so that's why i did that uh, lecture on diversity Lewis, which is part of me, which is not the hat I wear sometimes, because I've got like so many hats, I have that different one. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I do quite a lot of stuff within the community, as I was saying, and, and, and it's, it's up to, you know, the creativity inside you to find something that's relevant to your day-to-day -day living. So like the match yesterday, you know, at the, uh, at Brighton, you know, I, I never took part because of the fact that, well, I had other things to do, but then I've got so many people who, who were there and they were on Facebook, they were on Twitter, they were, you know, everything, you know, I, I, I was there with them, you know, I didn't need to go there, but then it's that kind of technology that we have now, you know, if, if we can use it in, in a way that gets your creativity going. I, I, love to see what kind of stuff we can get out because I, I used to write uh, lyrics for music you know and sometimes we used to sit in the studio somebody comes with a craft song and because he's paid for the studio time we have to make a song for him so he said okay this song we brought is your song but listen to how we're going to make it our song and then it's gonna be your song. How about this? <laughs> and it works, you know, because <laughs> you know it, it, it's that kind of thing, you know. It, 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 it's, it, it's it's creativity and sometimes yeah, even improvising. Like I I, I do I do sometimes play music in, in uh, just DJ and, and somebody comes and says it's my birthday, you know. So instead of being the happy birthday thing, he do a different happy birthday thing with his name on it. That's improvising, you know, but then people just don't understand, you know, because everybody wants to read the sheet, you know, like in classical music, you have to get the sheet and read it. But you have to learn how to improvise, and that's why I'm saying it's, it's not a thing that uh, I can teach you, or yes, I can teach you, it's something that is in you and, and you just have to tease it out slowly and get it out in you. So yeah, so I was going to talk about, uh, if, 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 if there's no question, because I, I, I wanted you guys to ask questions so that I could actually, could actually interact. if there's anything that you feel. Any questions? You, you need to know about, because I'm talking about creative writing in a way that we have to find something that's relevant to you. You know, if you feel like there's like hatred, you talk about hatred, but then there's a, just a thin line between love and hate. You know, it's the same thing, just different yin and yang. So these things, I think, might be disturbing for you because, yeah, maybe it's, most of you have experienced hate and have experienced love in a way that you, if you want to express it, how do you ex express your anger? How do you express your love? How do you express your hate? I find it difficult to understand because I, like the village that I live in, it's very, very white. So you don't, like you don't really even have the issue of racism. So I find it quite alien because it just, whether people are racist or not, it doesn't happen because then if they were to be like it, there isn't even the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I find it quite difficult to draw on something like that. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's obvious that uh, Racism is kind of like 
very, very interesting because I, I come from Africa, you know, and we're all black. And we, we've got racism within different people just because of an accent, because somebody can have ginger hair yeah. and you've got ginger bash, you know, just because he's different. So, do we call that racism? You know, do we call somebody who's got a Scottish accent and you take out meek out of him? It's racism, you know. So, so that's why I was telling you when I was telling you about the talk we had in uh, in Lewis, you know, when the article came and everybody was saying, "Oh, it's a racist country." This guy said there are people who kill, you know, like the Lee Rigby he got killed by these <coughs> guys. And there are people who just write things on the on the wall, like the like example I told you. And they all go racist, you know. And if you go to Esther, what do you call it, the uh, Inuits, they don't like to be called Eskimos. They got so many words for snow, you know, because snow when it's you understand? They, so there's this definition of language. We've got to find a language for all these things, and it's, it's called so difficult, so emotional, it's such an emotional topic. So I can understand where you come from, if you come from a place where it's all white, you know. We don't have any problems here because we are all white. You find that, hey, wait a minute, there's class, you know. There, there's issues around class. I don't want to go to his house because he's, you know, he's not working. It's not racism. No, it's not racism. It's just something to do with prejudice, you know, looking down on people or, you know, just others, we call them others, so, so long as they're, they're others, they're not the same. So I know it's difficult for you to think of color as part of racism in a place where it's white, but if you look, scratch, you know, in any surface, you find that there's quite a lot of stuff going on. I give an example of a... I hope you haven't gone to war or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a news alert. <laughs> I gave an example of uh, one person who, 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 who stood up and talked about uh, him being Jewish and his mom of that didn't want them to be associated with the religion because there was anti-Semitism you know, during the, after the war, the 60s, 70s. So he said they got a good English Anglican name and lived in Lewis. And when their grandmother died, they went to Germany. And that's when he realized, gosh, we are Jews. And that's when he was around 28. You know, all his life he's been living a lie. So these are the things, you know, it's not even racism, it's why should we be afraid of who we are? You know, why don't we be proud of what we are? Why should we use somebody else's, you know, of his, he hasn't gone to school, he's illiterate, he's ignorant, or he's got an accent, so he's an other, you know. So, so that's why it's, 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 it's that kind of thing. I, wasn't, I wanted to tease it out. That's why I gave you such a spectrum of examples. So you don't have to restrict yourself on color. Think, I, I should say think beyond the box because it's boring. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, but then that's what you have to do. You have to get away from that uh, bashing theme of homophobic, Islamophobia, and all this, and just get to things that are practical. You know, I don't like his music. You know, he's a emo, whatever. He's a gothic. He's a, he's a punk rock. He's a you know, he likes pop, bubblegum music. That's already others, you know. You, you just judge somebody according to what he likes. So these are the things I think I, I, I wanted to get into your level, but because you know I, I came up with the, what we do at the Bachelor, so it is that kind of challenge to you guys to, to just find something that challenges you, you know, gets you to think about love and hate, gets you to think about uh, yin and yang, which is the Chinese word for negative and positive, you know, just think of night and day, think of just, just, those parts, so you get the emotional feeling about it, so you, you, you try to understand it in your own way, that, that's why it's, it's, it's not something you learn about, it's something that you understand about yourself and then you get comfortable with it and then you run with it, 
you know. So that's why I was saying, do a poem, do do uh, lyrics for a song, make a script for a movie, make a TV script or radio play, you know, anything that you feel will will challenge you into thinking about those, you know, emotions around love and hate, black and white, you know. So I think racism was quite a sensitive thing. And that's what I, I deal with. I deal with people who are not born bad, but they're evil. <laughs> you know, they are. You know, I can't, I can't. I can't say anything, you know, because they are, they, they, and it, it, statistics show that they are there. So for me, it's, it's, it's that kind of stimulus. I, I thought, yeah, so, and, <coughs> and the whole idea is to is to get away from me and just try to find relevancy within the community. So we we go maybe to some lady. The best one was this lady. She she's in a she's in a home right now. You know, and she, she's around 94 or something. But her story was that she used to be in the war during the Second World War. And she used to patrol the coast around East, yeah, you know, East Sussex. And she, there were a regiment of men, you know, and she was part of them. So she was a soldier, but she was a part of this regiment. So she, they used to go out and you know, those big guns to deter the planes from coming across. And one day, all the men got killed, and she was left alone, you know, money, this gun, and she had never, ever, ever been taught how to use it. And she was left alone, and the only thing she could do is to go there and remember the things the men used to do. And she stood there for at least 12 hours, shooting and shooting till reinforcement came. Yeah. So isn't she a hero? But does anybody know about her? You know? And she was my neighbor, you know, and you could see her, you know, Jean used to walk down the street and say, Jean, how can you live alone? You know, I remember one day she fell down and everybody was like, oh, Jean is falling down and going with the ambulance. She's 94 or so. But nobody knows her story, you know. So these are the things that I wanted to say, you know, everybody's got a story there, but how do you get that legal thing that will make headline news or will pep up people's ears and, and get to... So that's, 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 the, that's the kind of thing actually writing in the community is all about. It's getting you to listen, you know, and, and it's a technique. Listening is, is so hard. Sometimes your mom says, oh, you've been listening one ear there and one day out. And it's true, you know, because you choose to listen what you want to listen, you know, and I know my, my mother-in-law, you know, when you talk something, she's not listening, and when you start talking about it, she says, I heard that, you know, and it's like, hey, wait a minute, we just called you, called you, and you did this here, and now you're in the kitchen, you're talking about you, you're saying you had that, you know, so it's, it's picking up the things that you want to hear, and it, it's, I think it's, a, it, it's also, I think it can be taught, it, listening can be taught, because it, it's, it's, it's trying to get what you want to hear, and what you don't want to hear, and the rest just goes, you know, so you pick up the stuff that's really important. And if you know what is important, you know, like a journalist, a journalist can go into a country and go and interview somebody and come out, you know, and that's a life skill, you know, but how does he know where to go and who to talk to and sort of research first? You have to plan what you're going to do. So you have to know your topic. Like, I, I, I know myself, I know Diversity Lewis, so I can talk about Diversity Lewis with confidence. You guys now, you have to really think of, hey, you know, I've got this topic, I want to write something, I've got to impress <coughs> the tutor, or oh, me. So what do you do? You go and do a research, you find out exactly what, so I, I was acting like spoon feeding. I was giving you all the information that you could find. Because I couldn't say, oh, read my book here, you know, everything about me is here. It's not yet written, but yeah, it's going to be right it. <laughs> but then that's the thing, you know, you, you research and you research, you research, you plan, you plan, you plan, and then, and then you find all the little things that you put online, and then you go and interview somebody. So, like in the community, I was thinking it, it'll be 
easy if instead of going and talking with somebody about his life, we could talk about the people around them. Like if Jeannie had uh, family, we could talk to the you know, brothers or sisters or children and, the, and they'll tell us about chronological things which we don't want to disturb Jeannie, but we'd love to hear Jeannie talk about her shooting those. And, uh, you know, we'd love to hear that passion in her voice. We'd love to see it, you know, from the horse's mouth, that's what they say, you know. And that's exactly what you bring out. You bring out the best in Jimmy, you know, and she'll go on about it. So these are the things, you know, it's, it's, it's the technique planning and the interviewing skills, because it's a skill, I think. Interviewing, like I say, Oprah Winfrey, she, she, she can pull out anything. You know, you listen to all these guys at the BBC, you know, really veteran, you know, journalists. They pull out the best in somebody. And how do they do it, you know, because there's no formula, you know, it's something you acquire, you know, and you have to do your research, you have to know your, you know, the person that you're going to interview, you've got to do your research, you know, because there's things that are there in, in, in the papers, in the, you know, so. Do you think that is about listening? Because I know sometimes you can do all the research and you can think this is the story here, and then when you actually speak to someone, it just becomes obvious that there is something that they want to share, that they want to, to give, and that, that, is a, that, that is a skill to identify what that is and to help them kind of find a way of draw. I mean, often if I interview people, whether it's for my academic or creative, or for, not that academic work isn't creative, but um, I find that uh, often at the end of the interview they'll go, I hadn't expected to talk about that, and that's yeah. when I always feel that I've, I've done a good job. Yeah, it, it is, I think it's making somebody comfortable enough to be able to feel like, ah, I can talk about this, you know, because some people won't open up, you know. I'm sure most of you have had, uh, you know, relationships with uh, even your parents or your boyfriend or girlfriends or mates, you know, and it takes quite a while to open up because it's like, I don't, I don't know if this is right. And an interview person just hits, you know, because for the jugular it gets you comfortable and makes you reveal what you didn't expect, you know, I didn't expect to do that. And I think that's what even Michael Jackson didn't expect to sing in front of a camera to Oprah Winfrey because he, he was shy. You, if, you, if you watch that interview, it's on YouTube. That guy was shy, but how did she make him feel so comfortable until he signed that song, you know? So these are the things, yeah, it's, 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 it's obvious, it's something, that's why people get paid, you know, the king, you know, he, he gets paid by the time because Larry King, because he, he, he can get you there within five minutes and it's like, wow, how did he do that? It's experience. So, yeah, I think you can, you, you can learn it, it's just, it's, 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 it's either you want to learn it, and then it, it hits you and then you're on a roll. Or maybe it becomes quite difficult to get it and you've got to keep on repeating and getting to know what works and what doesn't work. So, yeah, and uh, with, uh, with Diversity Lewis, uh, I, we talked about committee cohesion, which was quite, uh, quite very sensitive to me and emotional because of the race issues and all that. But then we also have uh, other stands, you know, because people came to that meeting and everybody came with all these ideas. But then, as I said, I had to give them to somebody who can do it. So we did the shared journeys, which, which is uh, connected with this uh, learning in the community. But we didn't call it shared journeys, as I told you, we called it uh, collecting stories, because we just wanted stories that people, memoirs, people are going to die of, and we want that genius story, and when she dies off, nobody else will hear the story. So it was just a matter of collecting stories, taking video, you know, and putting it on YouTube or making a documentary, you know, depending on a couple of things. But then, I realized that we can use it also as a tool to teach you know, people about history. For example, if I'm 
in fact, you talk about World War II, and you've got Jeannie there, she'll talk about her fight, but then you'll have somebody who's been there, and you can sit there, and like me now, you can ask me questions about stuff that maybe you, you didn't know about maybe Kenya, you know, you, maybe if you want to know something about Kenya, I'm there, and you can ask me, you know, so I'm like a talking book, you know, instead of going on Google, here I am, you know, ask me, you know, so that's, that's the kind of thing, so I'm going to use it as a resource, so we can take it to schools, and the teacher saying, oh, in the curriculum we're talking about Hindu religion, or oh, what's Hindu, oh, it's a religion from India, oh, do you know there's somebody's dad who's from India, yeah, and he's got all this uh, Indian goddesses and Indian 